The official newspaper files of the early West record many stories of famous and notorious characters of that period. Among them, Billy the Kid, the terror of the old West in the 1880s. He was the most feared gunman and outlaw in the pages of history of the old or new frontiers of America. Hello, cowboy. When did you get out? Just before daybreak. Where have you been keeping yourself? Up front. You going to sit in? No, thanks. I don't have any beans. Don't need beans. Money will do. Don't have much of that either. Well, let's just see how much that is. I'm Matt Clark, railroad detective. I used to throw hobos like this off trains, but the last thing I wanted this trip was trouble. Over a thousand head of cattle had been stolen from the railroad stock pens a hundred miles north of here eight days ago. There was another detective working the Mesilla country who was to meet me outside of town and pass on any information as to the movement of the stolen herds. Hello, Frankie. I was waiting down the road where the boss told me to meet you. Yeah, I know. I got delayed. The boss tells me you got a line on the stolen herd. The trail herd came through Mascara Gap day before yesterday. They're hidden not more than 20 miles out of Mesilla. Are you sure about that? The gang that brought them down has been visiting the Cantina de Oro the last two nights. Did you have the sheriff? He left town two days ago. He's lucky. Why? The head of the gang is Billy the Kid. Billy the Kid? Wow. Why is everyone so afraid of him? He's just a little runt. Got nice blue eyes and always smiling. Seems to me a big fella like you ought to be able to take him over your knees, spank him, and send him back to Mama. That's not the way I heard it. Those guns he wears makes him eight feet tall and tougher than a grizzly. Any more good news? He's been coming in the cantina openly since the sheriff left town. I got myself a job playing the piano there to keep track of him. Good. I hope the kid doesn't suspect you because you know how well he likes detectives. Yeah. You go ahead. I'll hoof it on into town. Okay, I'll see you there, Matt. Bye. I figured if I rolled in a Messiah with dust on my heels and sand in my hair, nobody would take me for a railroad detective. Not even Billy the Kid. Hear the honest ring of silver, stranger. Treat that with respect, senor. That's the last of a long and noble line. <laughs> This was the notorious Billy the Kid, born William H. Bonney in the slums of New York City. If the kid's widowed mother had married a man who fled west to escape the Civil War, the kid might have become the bully of the Bowery instead of the scourge of the great Southwest. Bartender. 
senor. Some glasses and some good whiskey. Night rewards hung over the kid's head, yet there wasn't a man in the place who dared gamble with a fate like that. They know about that violent temper. They knew as well as I that he'd already pulled the trigger on some 18 victims. And the tally would be 21 before he died. One for every year of his hectic life. Tell your new piano player I want to buy her a drink. Si, senor. The kid would like the pleasure of your company to drink with. What if I don't care to? Then you will have to find a pianola someplace else. For this would put me out of business forever. Please, senorita, please. Gracias, señor. Gracias. You play piano real good. Thanks. Reminds me when I was little. My mother used to play the piano. Whenever she could get close enough to one. She was never rich enough to own one. Why don't you buy her one? You can afford it now, can't you? Well, I don't know where she is. I left home a long time ago. Go on. You can't be over 20. Counting the years don't mean anything. It's what you've seen and done. What I've seen and done makes me older than anybody else in this bar room. I've got to see him in the Billy. Well, let it wait. You can't. The old man said to tell you you got to move those cattle tonight. Tomorrow I'll be too late. You got word that Pat Garrett's right. You know, funny when I'm having a conversation with a lady. You'll excuse us, ma'am? Why, of course. How your old man stayed alive so long with you hanging around beats me. Now say what you got to say, will you? I couldn't make out what the young fella had said to the kid, but I knew that Frankie had heard. Let's go, man. We're riding. things yours, miss? Yes. You better put them on. You're riding with us. Me? Why? Maybe you heard, maybe you didn't. Just to make sure, you better come along. You can't make me go. Keep your hands off of her. You don't know who I am, do you, mister? I don't care who you are, Sonny. The lady said she didn't want to go. Well, it's lucky for you you're not packing a gun. Who is he, miss? I, uh... I don't know. It's just some saddle bum that drifted in. Well, shooting him won't give him no manners. Take care of him, boys. Get out of the way, miss. Go get her on a horse. There's a gold piece. Go get yourself a gun. Because the next time I see you, you're going to have to use it.
Billy the Kid rides into town and rides out, and I'm lying there flat on my face in the street where the horses stood. I guess luck was with me at that. The young fellow that talked with the kid, the little thief that stole my coin, was coming back down the street in a wagon. It suddenly occurred to me that he might be headed for the same place as a kid. Stopping me for? I ain't done nothing. Don't go getting excited, son. We're just stopping everybody to wish him good morning. What do you got under this canvas here? Morning to you too, Mister. What are you hiding for? Timid? Just keeping out of the sun. Talk sense. I'm Pat Garrett, sheriff from over in Lincoln. Well, I'm sure glad to hear that. I thought at first you were a hold-up artist. I'm Matt Clark, railroad detective. Here's my credentials. I'm after a herd Billy the Kid stole from our railroad. He's all right. We're looking for the kid, too, for the murder of Sheriff Brady. Kind of like to get him while we still have a few sheriffs left. Care to throw in with us? I'd be a fool not to. Fact is, I stowed away in this wagon because I figured the boy here knew where Billy was hiding. Tell us about the kid, Sonny. I don't know nothing about him. What's your name? Mose. Mose Stanton. Thanks, son. That's all I have to know. His old man is Jake Stanton, a middleman for stolen cattle. It's an odds on bet we'll find the kid at his ranch now making a deal. What do you say we get in on it? Him! Take the boy back to town. Organize a posse. Get him back out of here as fast as possible. We'll keep trailing the kid till you get here. You can take his horse. Kid wasn't at the Stanton Ranch, but he wasn't far from it either. We caught up with him later that day. There he was with his gang and old man Stanton's cowhands. Down there below us, moving a stolen herd north to meet the Colorado buyers. It was Pat Garrett's show and he handled it well. He decided the best place and time to strike was here and now. Before we got time to think about it twice, we were all tearing down that slope, headlong into action. Billy's gang were cut down one by one in the stampede. Old man Stanton, who was buying the stolen cattle, was killed in the fight. I 
spotted the kid heading for the hills. Come on, Pat! I was worried about Frankie. I was sure the kid hadn't harmed her, but I wondered where he had taken her. It wasn't too long before I found out. Blowing out of the hills. They're on my trail like a hound dog. Give me some shots. I was gonna let you go tonight, Frankie. I can't now. You gotta come with us. Please, Billy, let me stay here. I can't help or hurt you now. You can. You're our passport to Mexico. For your sake, I hope they don't start shooting. This is a good spot. Why don't we stay here? You get myself trapped in a Mexican standoff? I've never seen one of those yet that works. Sooner or later, you run out of water, grub or lead, and you gotta make a run for it. You stick if you want to. I make my run now. I'm with you, kid. I'll take Frankie in the buckboard. You get your horse. <laughs> Get around and back. If we have to, we'll starve him out. Fox, I should have known. We didn't want to hit Frankie, but trying to plug the kid. We made some noise just to let him know we were on his tail. It's nice, Matt, but you can put me down now. I'm all right. <laughs> well, you finally ran me down. What pleases me most, Billy, is taking you alive. I never thought I would. Maybe so, Pat. But I'll promise you one thing. You'll never hang me.
On the afternoon of April 28, while one of his guards was in a restaurant across the street, Billy slugged his other guard and took his gun away, then shot him in cold blood. He made his way to the porch of the old building serving as a temporary jail. Bob Bollinger heard the shots and came running out. July, two months later, Pat Garrett finally got a clue as to the kid's whereabouts. He rode to Fort Sumner with John Poe, a range detective, and myself as deputy. Toward midnight one evening, we came to the house of Pete Maxwell, a rancher friend of both Garrett's and the kid. night of July 14, 1881, lay William H. Bonney, alias Billy the Kid. As he had lived by the gun, so did he die. Billy's dead and gone. What are your plans? Oh, I've got a nice little ranch north of here. It'll do me just fine to sit on it and work it from now to doomsday. I sure wasted a lot of time trying to cut the kid's trail. Too much time, if you ask me. I wouldn't say it was wasted, Mr. Garrett. Most of New Mexico must be sleeping easier these nights. I don't know. I kind of regretted having to do it. I'd rather take him alive. When I saw him that night, it was just a simple case of who shot first. I happen to be the lucky one. Could have been the other way around. There's our train. You better whip it up. We're going to flag her down at the junction. Hiya! 